Conditional Statements A conditional statement is a two-part statement written in the form if, then. The hypothesis is the part after the if, and the conclusion is the part after the word then. How do we turn a statement into a conditional statement? The first step, you want to break the statement up into two parts. Then, keep the parts in order, unless the statement already has an if in it. Next, insert the two parts into the form if blank, then blank. And lastly, add minimal extra words so that the statement actually makes sense. So we want to take this statement, a square has four sides, and we want to turn this into a conditional statement. So first, let's identify two different parts. A square has four sides. So we have this first part about something being a square, and the second part about having four sides. So it's kind of like the two different facts. You want to split those up. So then let's move on to part two. We want to keep the parts in order unless the statement already has an if. This does not have an if in it, so we're just going to leave them in order. The square part first, having four sides second. Third, we need to insert the two parts into the form if blank, then blank. So if a square then has four sides. Now, if you read the statement to yourself, it doesn't really make sense, right? If a square then has four sides. So we need to go to step four. Add minimal extra words so that the statement makes sense. If a shape is a square, then it has four sides. So then we can write our final statement. If a shape is a square, then it has four sides. And that's how we turn just any statement into a conditional statement with a hypothesis and a conclusion. I want you to go ahead and try to rewrite these two statements as conditional statements. So remember our steps and then work these two out and then check back with me when you finish. So in example one, the two parts should have been all students taking geometry, then have homework. If you go into step two, there's no if, so we just go right into step three, if all students taking geometry, then have homework. So when you read that to yourself, you should realize it doesn't make sense. So we need to change a little bit of the wording and then add extra words so that the statement makes sense without losing the original meaning. If you are a student taking geometry, then you have homework. Now in the second one, we have I will buy a car if I win the lottery. Now in step two, this one does have that word if. So we can't actually keep the two parts in order. If you have the word if, that part following the if needs to come in the front. And then that second part will come in the back after the word then. So this statement will read, if I win the lottery, then I will buy a car. And we have to be careful about where you're placing these because remember, the if is the hypothesis. So if this happens, then the conclusion will happen. Here are the symbols that we're going to be using as we talk about conditional statements and we use symbolic notation. So make sure you know these. This arrow means then. The squiggle is a negation. So that means not, doesn't, isn't. These three dots means therefore. The double-sided arrow stands for if and only if. This up, just like the top part of an arrow, means and and this downwards means or. So let's talk about how to translate statements from symbolic to words and from written statements to symbolic notation. 
So we're going to use these three statements. I'm just saying statement P is represented by Josh does his geometry homework. Statement Q is represented by Josh studies for geometry. And statement R is represented by Josh gets an A. So first we want to translate the symbolic notation into an actual word statement. So this one says P then Q. So we want to take the P part, Josh does his geometry homework, then Q, Josh studies for geometry. Now the only thing that's extra in here is whenever you see that symbol for then, you have to know that there's going to be an if in front of that first statement. So if and then go together with this arrow. So that's exactly how we write it. If Josh does his geometry homework, the P statement, then he studies for geometry, our Q statement. We're going to do that same thing for this next one. This says P or not Q. So we start off with that P statement again. Josh does his geometry homework or, and then we want to negate the Q statement so that it says Josh does not study for geometry. So Josh does his geometry homework or he does not study for geometry. We have to insert that negation. And this last one, those three dots means therefore, R. So therefore, our statement, Josh gets an A. Now we want to do that same thing, but the opposite. We're going to translate from written statements to symbolic notation. And I've color coded this so that it helps you. Just know that when you're actually doing this, it won't be color coded. If Josh does not do his homework, so that's our P portion, our P statement, negated because of that not, then he does not get an A. So it's our R statement negated. And remember, because this is an if-then form, we need to have that arrow showing not P, then not R. The second one, Josh studies for geometry, our Q statement, and he does his geometry homework, our P statement. So for this one, we have Q and P. Lastly, Josh studies for geometry, our Q statement. If and only if, that's our double-sided arrow, he does his geometry homework, the P statement. So we have Q, if and only if, P. Next, we want to talk about the four main different types of conditional statements we're going to talk about. So remember, these are all if-then statements with a hypothesis followed by a conclusion. The original conditional statement, we already talked about, a two-part statement written in the form if-then, and that's P, then Q. The inverse is a statement formed by negating the hypothesis and conclusion of a conditional statement. So we want to take the original conditional P then Q and we want to negate both parts to make it not P then not Q. A trick to remember this, think of the first two letters of inverse IN and that stands for insert negative. So you're just going to take the conditional, insert negative for both of them. The converse is a statement formed by switching the hypothesis and conclusion of the conditional statement. So you take the original conditional statement, and we're just going to switch the two parts. So instead of P, then Q, it's going to be Q, then P. And then you can think of the first two letters of converse, CO, for change order. So you're just going to change the order of the original conditional. Lastly, we have the contrapositive, which is a statement formed by negating the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse. So this time, we're taking the converse statement where they're already switched, and then we're going to negate both of them. So it's not Q, then not P. So just think about this one as the contrapositive is the really long one, so do both. You want to insert the negative and change the order, and then you'll have the contrapositive. So
So spend some time, you are gonna need to memorize the different types. So the conditional is the original, inverse, insert negative, converse, change order, contrapositive, the long one, do both, insert negative and change the order. Now we're gonna talk about how to actually write these statements given an original statement. So the first part, we start off the same. We're gonna break this into two parts. When it is a rainy day, Anna takes an umbrella. So we separate our two parts, our P portion and our Q. These are just variables that we're gonna use just to generally talk about it. The conditional is the original, if P then Q. So if it is a rainy day, then Anna takes an umbrella. Inverse, remember, this is where we're going to insert a negative. So we're gonna take our original conditional, not P, then not Q. So if it is not a rainy day, then Anna does not take an umbrella. Next, when we talk about the converse, CO, change order. So we're gonna take the conditional and switch the order, Q then P. So we have, if Anna takes an umbrella, then it is a rainy day. And lastly, we have the long one, the contrapositive. So we wanna do both. Insert negative, change order. So we get not Q, then not P. So we have, if Anna does not take an umbrella, then it is not a rainy day. Now it's important that you know the four different types, and then that's why I gave you these hints to remember what to do with those types of conditional statements, what the symbolic notation looks like, so that you'll be able to take any statement you're given and write it in the four different statements. Now, next time, we are gonna take these different statements and analyze them a bit more. So it's important that you do take some time to really know these four different types of statements and also how to take an original statement and change it into a conditional. Equivalent statements. These are two statements that are either both true or both false. A conditional statement is equivalent to its contrapositive. So that means that if the original conditional statement is true, the contrapositive, the long one where you change the order and insert negative, that statement will also be true. But if the original conditional statement is false, then the contrapositive will also be false. Similarly, the inverse and converse are equivalent statements. So if the inverse, where you insert the negative, if that statement is true, then the converse, where you change the order, will also be true. But if the inverse is false, then the converse will also be false. That's it for today. Make sure you submit any questions you have, and I'll see you in class.